I really hope that that introduction does not set the tone for the rest of this video. Because if that's all you're going to do, I don't think this will be much of a challenge. Uh, Happy New Year! Well, it's July, so I'm guessing I was a little late to the party on this one. Okay, today we're going to talk about feminism. Oh, my favorite! And I can't decide if my angle is straight or not. Isn't that the sort of thing you should probably cut out of your videos? I mean, I know I tend to ramble and just go on about shit for no good reason, but I don't keep that kind of shit in my videos, come on! Be professional about this at least, just a little bit. A smidgen. More specifically feminism and its link to rape culture. I do think you may be onto something there. I think there is probably quite a significant link between feminism and rape culture, considering that feminism has been responsible for a large number of false rape accusations and, and being gotten away with and so on and so forth, as well as actually a lot of apologizing for and um, negating of uh, rapes and sexual assaults perpetuated by uh, women, particularly against men and young boys. So yeah, feminism, rape culture, the connection is obvious. It should be apparent to anyone with a brain. Feminism does lead to rape culture, unlike sort of just normal society, which seems to find rape an abhorrent and uh, uh, incredibly uh, evil and vile and villainous, despicable act, and uh, it, it, rapists are, are hated and uh, despised by literally everyone, except apparently feminists. It's really fun. You sicko, how dare you suggest rape is fun? I'm shocked, shocked and appalled. Both of which are very complex issues, so I'm telling you right now that I will not be able to cover all of the facets. All right, let's vow to keep our minds open for the next few minutes. I require no such vow, considering my mind is always open to new possibilities. If you here and now show to me that rape culture exists or that feminism is in some way good, you know what I'll do? I'll become a feminist and I'll fight against rape culture. So please do so. Because, I mean, wouldn't that be good? I mean, if you were good enough to, like, convince me, then I, that, that would be great. That you'd be, like, the greatest YouTuber ever. So, please do that, because that'd be awesome. You won't. Chances are it's just going to be shit. Feminism is a very dear issue to me, as a female and as a human. Let's define feminism. This is how I see it. Feminism is equal rights for women in relation to men, politically, socially, economically, all areas of living. Well, by this definition, I'm a feminist, because I believe in all of these things. Uh, however, I would say, and I have said, and I will continue to say, I am not a feminist. I, in fact, identify as an anti-feminist. Why do you think I would identify this way if I fit the definition that you're using? Obviously we use different definitions. My definition is not one of this is what I think the word means. It is how the word is used in society. I do not look up in the dictionary feminism, see the belief in, you know, the political, economics, social equality of the sexes and go, okay, there you go, that must be it, which is what you appear to have done. Instead, what I do is look at feminism, those who are part of the feminist movement, those members of feminist organizations, feminist writers, and feminist philosophers, and so on and so forth, listen to what they have to say, see what they do, watch them, learn from them, and in so doing, determine that I am opposed to a great number of their beliefs and practices, and find the movement to be vile and horrific. As such, I choose not to identify with the label. This should hopefully give you an understanding of uh, why I do not believe feminism is a good thing. Now I must ask you this. If I believe the same way you do, but do not call myself a feminist, and have given an adequate reason justifying this distinction, will you not too do the same thing? I think you won't. And I don't think it's because you're stupid or because you're evil or something like that. I think you won't 
because you suffer from confirmation bias, as we all do, and you refuse to change your mind even when confronted with actual evidence because it appeals to you. Please tell me I'm wrong. You won't. But I would like it if you did. Feminism is not male bashing. It is not the desire for women to be dominant over men. Well, uh, then I guess all those feminists who bash males and want to be dominant over men don't exist. They were just figments of our imaginations, collectively. So this is the issue I have. When people say things like, it's not about male bashing, it's not about hatred of men, it's not about female superiority, and then I point out, well, what about all the people fighting for female superiority and do a bashing the men and hating the men? Well, they say, <laughs> which is a good word, but um, doesn't actually change anything. It doesn't help. They just ignore them, or they use the no true feminist fallacy. <laughs> because, according to them, anyone who doesn't believe in the thing that they claim to believe in is not the thing that they believe in. Whereas anyone who does actually believe in the thing they believe in is not the thing because they don't believe in the thing that they don't believe in. Which, if you can wrap your head around that sentence, kind of makes sense, but uh, only if you're thinking that they're all idiots. Made sense in my head. People who male bash are extremists, and I don't even feel comfortable calling them feminists. No true Scotsman. Ah, the people committing all the terrorist acts aren't really Muslims. <laughs> Sorry, to tell you lass. They are. I think it's really wrong to male bash and then call it feminism. It gives feminism a bad name, and it's also not very nice. I like that you decided to put, it makes the movement look bad before the actual issue with male bashing, which is that it's not very nice at all. It's bad. You shouldn't male bash and say we shouldn't female bash. Basically, don't bash. <laughs> oh, it's fucking Emma Watson all over again. I think, unfortunately, feminism has become far too associated with man-hating. This association has to stop because I make money from saying I'm a feminist. I don't want to be associated with man-hating. I mean, I may hate men, but, but, but I don't want to be associated with it. I, grow the fuck up. <laughs> well, the problem with uh, the label uh, Nazi is that uh, Nazism has become too synonymous with Jew-hating. Yeah, no shit. Fuck off. Some people, in my experience, especially men, are afraid of feminism because they think it, that it's male bashing. That would be because of the male bashing. Please keep up. But for me, becoming a feminist has greatly raised my awareness for men's issues. I really hope that that's true, considering that men do have a great number of issues. Um, I, I am aware that some feminists uh, have a lot of contact with their, the MRM and so do uh, speak to a lot of uh, men's rights activists and do learn of things that uh, are actually affecting men. I've still never really seen a feminist actually advocate for men's rights uh, or say that they like men's rights activists or men's rights activism or anything of the sort. Um, I have noted a few feminists who have uh, said things in support of individual rights that they are uh, in favour of. For instance, Lacey Green, I've said in the past, um, has been uh, anti-circumcision, which is good. Uh, but I, I dare say if you have learned of male issues, they're likely going to be the uh, feminist version of male issues. Like, men can't express themselves. Which is bollocks. But please go on, because I'd love to hear what you've uh, been taught. Maybe it's good. I sincerely hope it's good. Since there have been a number of people who don't take me seriously because they treat my advocacy for women's rights as a phase, or like it's not a serious issue. Oh, uh, so you're not going to talk about men's rights, and you're not going to mention one. Good, good talk. Yeah, I like it. Moving on then. Let's define rape culture. Deal. Okay, I'm going to define it like this. 
Rape culture is a culture which apologizes for, excuses, uh, condones, or is otherwise in favor of rape and is not opposed to it. For instance, um, what you wouldn't find in a rape culture are uh, uh, laws against rape or people being uh, prosecuted and persecuted for being rapists or rapists being uh, mistreated or hated or ostracized, um, sexual offenses, uh, like registries and so on and so forth. Basically, the sort of things you find in Western cultures are the sort of things you wouldn't find in a rape culture. Based on this definition, I think we could say that we don't live in a rape culture. Oh, unless, of course, um, you continue to use this definition and observe that uh, in many instances this does actually occur. We, 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 we find we don't have laws on the books uh, preventing rape. We don't have people shunning and hating and ostracizing rapists, provided those rapists are female and they rape men or boys, in which case they are not arrested. They are excused, apologized for. It turns out we do live in a rape culture, and one that has been perpetuated by feminists. Interesting that, isn't it? But uh, I dare say you have a different definition of what rape culture is that doesn't actually make any sense. So please give it. I'm dying to hear as any sort of tolerance or condoning of rape or sexual assault behaviors or attitudes that sexually oppress people like slut shaming or victim blaming well that's half a very good definition and half a very poor definition the first half is pretty much what i said only you missed a couple of things out um the second half on the other hand is just shoehorned in feminist bollocks because, of course, victim blaming, as far as some is concerned, uh, is things like, this is how you can prevent rapes in the future. Which is fine. And, of course, slut shaming is completely irrelevant. The fact that some people shame sluts doesn't mean rape. In the same way that if you shamed a person who likes to go around beating people up, that doesn't contribute to a murder culture. I fail to see the connection. And I dare say you won't actually bring it up. Although, of course, if you do, then I'll be more than happy to listen to what you have to say. I'm just guessing it's gonna be bollocks. Again, many, many facets of it, but a large part of feminism that is circulating from today's society would not really exist without issues stemming from rape culture. This is true without the bullshit fear-mongering that feminists have been uh, perpetuating and uh, all the ridiculous, entirely false, disproven statistics like one in five girls on our college campuses have been raped. You're right, feminism wouldn't really exist in its current form. It might have been significantly more informative, more accurate. Uh, it might have actually been fighting for women's rights instead of trying to destroy men and make women cowering, terrified messes of tangled emotions and pathetic flailing limbs, which seems to be what it's currently going for. I fail to see how this is a good thing. So I understand that there are many issues in the world in and outside of feminism, and I'm not trying to say that any of them are more important than the other. I'm just only focusing on a few. That's a genuinely positive thing to say. Well done. It's a shame it was needed, considering people should be knowledgeable enough to be aware that you're not inherently saying these things are the most important. But thank you for the clarification. That's actually a good thing. More of that, please. I know that for me and countless other females, we now have this internalized fear of being out alone in public, especially when it's dark, and being cautious when a man looks at us, let alone talks to us. And this is the result of feminism. Now please pay attention because it's very important. If you are a woman, you are significantly less likely than a man to be attacked, to be assaulted, to be murdered, uh, to be in a fight, to be raped, and many, many more 
Also, if you are in an altercation and there are any passers-by, they will help you. Even if you are the instigator. Whereas if you are a man, people will ignore you, will laugh at you, will join in to fight against you, and no one will care. You have access to battered women's shelters, to rape survivor shelters, and so on and so forth. You have access to way more than anything men do, and you are far less likely to require them, and you will be taken more seriously. Also, you actually have legal protection under the law, unlike men. But the reason you fear it, far more than men do, is because you have been told time and time again that you are going to be raped by every man you've ever met, that every man is a secret rapist, and that every man must be put down because they're villains. These are the lies that feminism has spread. This is what you have been taught, it is what you have been indoctrinated with, it is what you have accepted without question. And you appear to have at least some semblance of self-awareness, so please recognize that this is an issue that never needed to exist and that you ought to free your own mind from the shackles that feminism has placed you in. You have the capacity. Do so now. This is considered a huge daily feminist issue that women deal with. But it's not just a women's issue. There is a double standard there that all men are like creeper, pervert rapists. Those fears, of course, do not stem from nothing. They're not a small issue. They're a result of a huge issue. And this is where you go wrong. Yes, it's an issue. It's an issue that you feel this way. It's an issue that you think this because it's wrong. It's an issue that this has caused you to mistrust men, to paint them all as perverts, and you recognise that treating all men as perverts and villains and scumbags and scoundrels and whatnot is wrong, is incredibly wrong. But then you say, but it's sort of justified, because, I mean, there is an issue, I mean, sometimes this sort of thing happens to some people, therefore, it's alright! <laughs> and that's not the way that works. If I were to go around preaching that all black people were evil and black people couldn't be trusted and that if you're a white girl you're gonna be raped and you're gonna be murdered because black people are gonna get you because some black people do things, people would recognize how would recognize how racist and how wrong that was, how bigoted, how hateful. You change the demographic from black person to man and suddenly this becomes acceptable. This is the double standard. It is your double standard. It is not mine. Like one in three or one in four women in the US have been raped or sexually assaulted. And yet, that is a proven lie. This is not the case. Th this, these statistics are hugely inaccurate, massively so. I do not recall uh, what the more accurate figure was. But even if, let's assume, oh God, I think it might have been good for I did this. Um, Let's assume that like the one in three or one in five uh, statistic is accurate. We're going to go somewhere in the middle. We'll say one in four. And then they say only 10% of rapes are reported. Okay. So we'll multiply the one in four by 10. What you're left with is four in one. 400% of women have been raped. Does this mean that every woman's been raped four times? Or, or is it sort of like on average? The various feminist statistics don't work well together because they prove that if one of them is accurate, the others can't be. When as it happens, they're all always massively inaccurate. None of them are ever right. That means statistically that there is like a 30% chance that I will be raped or sexually assaulted in my lifetime. Okay, first of all, that's not how statistics work. Second of all, the statistics aren't accurate, so no, there isn't. People talk about rape like it's something that exclusively happens to women, but that's really not the case. The statistics of men that are raped every year are not as high as women's, but it's still significant. Um, actually, there are more male victims of rape than there are female victims of rape. Well, it's a shocking statistic. I know, but I can explain, hopefully, fairly easily. 
um, there's a distinction that has to be made uh, between the different types of rape. There is um, forced penetration, that is penetrating someone against their will, and uh, forced envelopment, that is to say, forcing someone to penetrate against their will. Um, and this is a distinction that is, uh, legally speaking, um, very important, because uh, forced to penetrate, forced envelopment, uh, is not illegal, is not rape, so it tends not to show up, particularly when feminists continue to um, deceive concerning and continue to uh, invade or, and uh, obfuscate this sort of information. Um, as such, when the CDC did a study, a survey, um, to discover the uh, approximate amount of uh, made to penetrate and also um, and also forceful penetration um, statistics for both men and women, they found that on average the amount of uh, people per year being uh, forcefully penetrated by men who are women uh, and the amount of men being forced to penetrate by women were about the same. And then of course you have on top of that all the uh, forced penetration against men. In reality, men suffer significantly more from rape than women do. And yet it's still painted by feminists as a female issue. Now thank you for bringing up that well, you know, it affects men too, but it actually affects men more. If anything, this is a male issue. It's not, because it's an issue for everyone. But you cannot downplay how much it affects men, considering it affects men more. It's the same with domestic violence. Whenever we talk about domestic violence, domestic violence is largely reciprocal uh, in a male and female household. Typically, um, men and women both, when they're domestically violent, will be domestically violent towards one another, and typically uh, in the same sort of way, to the same sort of severity. Um, and normally it will be instigated actually by the female. Um, however, when we find uh, individual cases where it's just one uh, person, typically it's the woman who is the violent one and not the man. Uh, and the women will typically uh, utilize uh, weaponry more than a man would. So it can be actually significantly more severe. And then they are apologized for. And also women have access to uh, battered women's shelters and um, all the other things that they have access to and men don't. These are issues that affect men more than women. And feminism is not helping. Feminism is making it worse. Please understand this. And we really need to stop thinking about rape and sexual violence as something that only happens to women. It's the number one underreported crime for a variety of reasons. I think it's foolish to say that men or women as genders have it harder over one another. It's really irrelevant and obstructive when you're talking about feminism and gender roles and rape culture in society. People need to understand that feminists are not just women. I know some feminists who would disagree with you. They are not just lesbians or straight people. I know some feminists who would disagree with you. They are especially not just white women. Do you, do you know what? I, would, I know some feminists who would disagree with you. It's okay for feminists to do things that are typically considered feminine, like wear makeup or dresses. I know some feminists who would disagree with you. The point of feminism is that they don't have to do those things. I know some feminists who would disagree with you. Ms. Sarkeesian, for instance. Are you aware that feminism is not about people's individual choices? It's not about women's personal choices. No, 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 that's, that's far too about personal uh, choice and freedom and uh, free will and uh, personal accountability. Feminism could never be about that. We need to teach women and men that it's not their fault if they are raped. Well, not really. I mean, it may be a nice sentiment being all, it's not your fault, you had no control over it. Uh, apart from then, that leads people to believe that they have zero power, no ability to defend themselves, no uh, sort of control over their own lives and existences, and have no way of taking care of themselves. It turns them into pathetic messes who can't handle real life. It's a bad thing to do. Don't tell people it's not their fault. To each people how they can take control of their lives and help prevent these things in the future.
Don't walk up to people and be like, it's your fault you got raped. Because that's stupid. No one does that. But feel free to say, you know, if we want to prevent things like this, what we really need to do is uh, teach people how to defend themselves and, uh, and so on and so forth. That's okay. That's fine. So, stop teaching people it's not their fault. All that does is make things worse. Teach people how to learn from their experiences and become better for it. We need to teach consent to everyone and we also need to teach that women can also be perpetrators of sexual violence. Like, consent is easy enough, pretty much everyone gets it, I guess, uh, so there's no real need to, but yeah, I can understand why you want to teach consent, I mean, it's a, a decent idea, in case there are people out there who don't understand it, but it's very simple. Um, as far as women being perpetrators of sexual assault and things, I know some feminists who would disagree with you. We need to be understanding and accepting of everyone's rights and comforts. The only way to fight this ignorance is with education and talking about it like this. So if you disagree or agree with anything I said, or you want to elaborate on anything, or you want me to elaborate on anything, let's have an informative discussion below, and I'll see you all next week. Okay, whoever you are, I don't remember your name. You seem to be not to bad. You seem to be a reasonable person, just a little uh, misguided by false information. You've been wrong, but that's okay. People have been wrong in the past, everyone's been wrong, I've been wrong. What's important is that you have an open mind and an ability to recognize when you are wrong and modify yourself accordingly, resulting in a better you. As such, I hope you will see this and Think to yourself, maybe he's right. Maybe feminism isn't all it's cracked up to be. Maybe I shouldn't be a feminist. Maybe the statistics I've been given are inaccurate. Because it should matter to you whether or not you believe in something false. You should always want to believe the truth. We should do all we can to try and ensure that our view of reality is as accurate as possible. So please stop and think before you next utter the words, I am a feminist, or I need feminism because, or whatever. And think, do I really need it? Am I actually a feminist? Do I want to align myself with the people who shot Andy Warhol and think that all men should be murdered? Do I really want to be part of a vile, violent hate movement that has resulted in untold death and misery? Because if your answer to any of those questions is no, then perhaps you should stop calling yourself a feminist. I'm Bread and Circuses, thank you for listening, fuck off, and of course, good luck.